Shin Sengumi by Romulus Hillsborough book review. So this is a history book. Uh, it's about Japanese history. Specifically, it's about well, the Shin Sengumi. Now, the Shin Sengumi were near the end of the 19th century, so just kind of at the tail end of the Tokugawa Shogun dynasty. They were a collection of ronin, uh, ronin of course meaning masterless samurai, who were selected to form a new elite corps in the city of Kyoto and police the city. So right during the final days of the Tokugawa Shogun Dynasty, kind of right before the Meiji Restoration, Kyoto was seething with political revolutionaries. Um, I've even heard them referred to as terrorists, maybe. Uh, people who wanted change or were, were, were eager to, to bring in the new era, which eventually led to the Meiji Restoration. But kind of in the days right before the Meiji Restoration, the Tokugawa Shogunate sent the Shinsengumi, this kind of new elite corps of ronin samurai, to patrol the streets of Kyoto and kind of keep it under control. So uh, the Shinsengumi are very famous in Japan. It's one of those things though, uh, you ever have it where you don't notice something and then somebody brings it to your attention and then you start noticing it everywhere? That was the case with me and the Shin Sengumi. I had, had no idea who they were. Then a student of mine recommended a movie to me, which I reviewed previously on this channel, uh, called When the Last Sword is Drawn, which was about the Shin Sengumi. I had no idea that it was who they were, but I looked it up on Wikipedia and started looking into the history of this. And then I started notice, uh, noticing that this name was kind of coming up everywhere. And the Shin Sengumi are big in Japan, like, like they're legends. Um, so there are movies about them, there are TV shows about them. Uh, there was even, I was in a bookstore once when I was in Japan and I noticed there was a monthly magazine that came up about them. You know, for I guess history aficionados, they can, every week they get a new episode detailing some aspect of the Shin Sengumi. So with, within Japan, they're very famous for, you know, people who like that kind of samurai stuff. Outside of Japan, well, obviously they're not so famous, but I did find this book when I was in a bookstore in Fukuoka. It, it's in English um, by Romulus Hillsborough, who's um, an American, I think. So it's, it's, it's written for a Western audience, kind of explaining what was going on and who the Shinsengumi were. And I thought, I should pick this book up. So, yeah, the Shin Sengumi were interesting, and they weren't necessarily good people, but they have an interesting story. L like I said, they were sent down to kind of quell the violence that was going on in Kyoto at the time, but uh, the author Romulus Hillsborough kind of poses a question. Did they actually stop the violence, or did they cause more violence? And, and this is a question he leaves open throughout the book. But it, it does seem to be clear that once they got down there, the power went straight to their heads. And uh, yeah, it, it seems like they were on a power trip the whole time they were down there. And they often just killed people on whims just to demonstrate their power. This was especially true uh, of the co-commanders, one of the co-commanders, uh, Serizawa Kamo. And in the book by Romulus Hillsborough, he comes off as simply being absolutely psychotic. Uh, eventually his excesses got too carried away and he was assassinated by his rivals in the Shinsengumi Corps. At the same time, even though the Shinsengumi are not necessarily nice people per se, uh, they did a lot of brave things. And when re recounting all of their deeds, uh, a tone of admiration does creep into Romulus's Hillsborough's writing about them. And 
It's hard to really hate them completely. They, they did some absolutely amazing stuff that they were against some astounding odds in some places and just kind of got through by, I guess, sheer bravery or swordsmanship. So this is, you can see why they're so popular. This is kind of the stuff movies are made of. This is the stuff legends are made of, really. Eventually, however, the tide of history did turn against them. Again, they were they were the shogunate police, but they were right where the period where the shogunate was falling. Uh, and so then after the shogunate fell, they found themselves on the wrong side of the revolution. And the author Hillsborough recounts how most of the Shinsengumi fought to the death even after the last shogun himself had resigned and made peace with the Meiji rest Restoration. Uh, now, I just recently reviewed a book on The Last Shogun, so these two books kind of tie together nicely. Uh, the Last Shogun, uh, the, the book I previously reviewed, was kind of more of a bird's eye view of the larger politics happening at the time, whereas this book, The Shinsengumi, was kind of very much concentrated on the street fighting that was happening in Kyoto at that time, kind of more localized. But both books complement each other nicely if you're looking for a couple books to read on the end of the Shogun era and the beginning of the Meiji Restoration. Um, yeah, it's, it's often been said, a number of people have said that the Japanese samurai movie is the equivalent of the American Western, or maybe vice versa. Uh, and when I was reading this book, I thought, Boy, that is true in more ways than one. Um, for one thing, I mean, samurais in Japan are ancient. They go back a ways. But the Shinsengumi, these particular samurais, were right at the end of the 19th century. So, you know, exactly the period of the Old West. But the other thing is, you know, when, when you read about the Old West and you read about some of these, like, the gunfights at the OK Corral or some of these more infamous gunfights, you have some eyewitness accounts that give almost blow-by-blow -blow descriptions when you read about some of these Old West accounts. You know, who shot first, who shot second. Um, the same thing when you're reading about the Shinsengumi. Romulus Hillsborough has some amazingly detailed accounts of some of the, the samurai fighting. Blow-by-blow uh, -blow accounts in some points, you know, like who parried whose sword and how somebody did an up thrust. I, I don't know. I'm, I'm not doing a good job of recreating it. But, but the, some of these accounts are blow-by-blow -blow of the sword fights. And you're like, how could an historian possibly know this? And, and actually, that question is never actually answered in the book. But I'm assuming just like some of these old Western gunfights, there must have been some eyewitnesses and they cobbled this together from eyewitness accounts afterwards. Um, you, you do wonder how accurate these eyewitness accounts are. I mean, given everything we know about how eyewitnesses often get things wrong, but I, I guess that's another question for another discussion. The, the point here being, somehow, they managed to reconstruct these events and blow by blow. Um, of course, that comparison has its limits, the comparison with the Old West, because the Old West, I think, was mostly about bandits. Or, I don't know, uh, maybe you could make the case, and I think some historians have, that there was a lot of politics happening uh, in the Old West. What's been termed banditry was actually... Well, leaving that discussion aside, what was going on in Kyoto was definitely political. Um, you could compare it to a revolutionary situation or to an insurgent situation. Uh, but, yeah, it's a, it, it, it's a fascinating, fascinating time period, uh, the, the backdrop against which the Shinsengumis adventures played out. So, so that adds to the interest of this as well. Um, all in all, I'd recommend this book. And if you don't know anything about the Shinsengumi, don't worry. I didn't know anything about them before I started reading this book either. 
uh, it, it, it acts sufficiently as an introduction to the Shinsengumi and the whole time period. So if you can track this book down, I'd, I'd recommend it.